Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rafe Kel. This is Final Fantasy V. And this is another grind. I think there's going to be a little bit less of this as the game goes on, but... One of the things that you definitely have to keep in mind here is... It's a Final Fantasy game, and we're going to be, be trying to go through it in about... 10 to 15 hours? <laughs> um, unfortunately, this section, there's only a few enemies in particular we're looking for. We'll see if I... See how this actually goes. So, this particular section, um, we are looking for the turtle-type enemies who drop turtle shells, which are a chemist item. Which can be used to cast a special spell. How many turtle shells are we actually at now? Four! Um... <laughs> the guide... suggests... 99. I am not doing that. <laughs> But I will do a bit. I'm okay with getting close to that, at least. More than four. We'll go with that. <laughs> now, we can increase... We can make this process go a little bit faster because uh, these guys do both have a drop and a steal of that item. So I'm probably going to be giving... I need to switch uh, Galoof over and give everybody steal for this because... While I'm not sure how much faster it's going to be if the steal rate is this bad. Um, I feel like getting an extra one out of each fight will be good. Making sure Ferris actually had the Thief Glove. Uh, so, the other thing that we're building up with this... ...is... ...by... So, in addition to just, you know, XP, <laughs> which is an obvious one, and money... Uh, which we need more money... The other thing we're getting out of this is... When we don't run into a turtle, I'm going to be running away. <laughs> I mean, it's not like... Amazing, but... Uh... But it could be good. Uh, I I'm thinking it'll be... A good way to build up our chicken knife for the end game too. So everyone has steel now.
There we go. There's our turtle shell, and we kill. Oh, we got an elixir too, nice. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Elixirs are nice. Um... So, um, overall, this is going to be really helpful for a chemist later. Um, we're going to be able to go buy some more rods at the end. We'll be higher level, so the next sections will be a little easier. It's both a setup and it's good for the late, uh, for later in the game and for now in several different ways. So I'm, I'm digging it. I feel like this is another good spot. Um, I should have, uh, should have poked people about a topic of conversation <laughs> before I started this. That would have been smart. Oh well. So, I mentioned before, a uh, chemist is not something I've ever really used. At least, the way it's supposed to be used. Like, I've leveled it up and used its ability, or some of its abilities, but I've never really used Mix. And Mix is apparently, like, the most powerful thing in the game. <laughs> which really surprised me. I also don't know all the formulas, and I've never gone through and looked at that. I saw, oh wow, there's a bunch of weird formulas here, and uh, I don't want to deal with that, and that was about as far as I got. So I'm actually kind of excited to try it this time. Okay, maybe we're not going to keep trying to steal from these guys. <laughs> this is really bad. These guys, this must just be a rare steal, and they must not have a regular steal. Um... The Thief Glove doubles your steal rate, but only for common items, not for rare items. So that would totally make sense. But I'm pretty sure that at this point, the fact that I'd be getting turtle shells a little faster is not worth the time that I just sunk into that. Considering I could also be getting XP and money and uh, ABP and, uh, you know, runaway attempts if I don't run into the turtles and everything else. No, I think we're just going to go with this. <laughs> think I think we're just going to kill everything. Every time I see the, the zoo, the big bird like at me, uh, I always think about, or I always end up thinking of the, uh, the one in Final Fantasy 4, which for some reason, every time you kill them, it says swoon. <laughs> it always just completely threw me off, <laughs> and it's such a weird little thing. I'm glad they did not carry that over. By the way, you see there, uh, Harris's... 
Ferris. Ferris's hair turned gray. Um, one of the status effects in this game is called Old. And I believe what Old does is uh, slowly deteriorates your level. So, you... So, in this game, almost all of the stats are static. Your stats, like your strength rating and stuff, are your... Your character, who ha each of them have a base stat line. Your class, which gives you bonuses. Some abilities that you have equipped will give you a stat bonus. Like, if you equip, uh, or will carry over a stat, uh, from a different class, basically. And equipment. Some equipment will give you some bonuses. But your stats actually don't go up as you level up. As like they do in a lot of games. They're a baseline. Your level is used as a multiplier or as part of a formula. To determine things like damage. Obviously, you still get, like, hit points and stuff, but that's it. That's what you get out of le out of levels. Most of it is multipliers, and uh, it increases that, uh, I mentioned before, the number of attacks that you're considered to do. It doesn't actually show all of the attack attempts, but, yeah. So, old is a really nasty status effect because what it's doing is taking out your, the number of attacks you get and the, the, basically all of your multipliers. Um, there are other effects that actually raise your level uh, we will be doing that potentially with Chemist later. Um, Chemist has a... Actually, it's the hero... I believe it's the hero drink that I got earlier. Uh, when a Chemist drinks one of those, it raises their level. Um, and when they raise their level like that, it raises all the multipliers. So... One of the, like, strategies that people can do, uh, specifically for if you get, like, Bard in the Fiesta. Bard has a special that raises the level on all your characters. So you'll do something like, have your... You know, have one character do the... Drink the hero drink. And your Bard raises your level cap overall, and then you have somebody use a special ability that is very level dependent and just nuke everything because they are suddenly, you know, super, super powerful. Um, the strategies I was seeing with that used stuff like uh, GP Toss from the Samurai class, which costs money but gives you these huge boosts, and it's just like, oh, that's, that's a thing. <laughs> that's definitely one way to do that, so that, but the cool part is, even if you're under-leveled, like in a speedrun type setting, that's a way you can break the game, basically, to, to continue winning. To beat the last boss at under level. We'll be doing something similar to that, but not to that extreme. With, uh, you know, having Chemist basically 
buff themselves up and then using their spell, which we are getting the components for now, the turtle shells. Um, which the turtle shells are used in a spell called Drain Kiss, I believe, uh, which is like has the highest rating of damage, magic damage, pretty much available in the game. Like, it's as powerful as, like, Holy and Meteor and stuff. But... Or possibly stronger. But the way that the multipliers work on it is apparently really scary, and so we're just gonna be nuking everything from orbit once we get going. Now, my normal setup that I like to use when I'm playing this game is a lot more, uh, is a, a lot closer to something like, uh, I usually end up with, uh, two mimes, which are one of the, it's the unlockable special super class, um, two mimes with different magic available. Mimes uh, have a special thing that they don't get the item menu slot normally. So they have three slots for special abilities. And so what I like to do with them is give them the double cast ability for Red Mage with three different mat or with two other different magics. So like summon and time magic or black magic and white magic with full versions of them, not just the Red Mage version. And so you end up with the ability to do like... I think what I actually was doing last time was one of them had white magic and time magic, one of them had white magic and summon, so that I could heal with either of them. But they had double cast, so they got to do two abilities, two spells per time, basically. I don't know. It's neat. I, I think that's a good way to, to do your magic users in the regular game for this. And then for the physical characters, I gave them, made them all Freelancer, which is the, uh, the base job that we started with. It has a special ability that lets you use... Uh, they automatically get the passive abilities for every class that you've learned. So stuff like, you know, like, the only stuff we've gotten so far is stuff like Passage and all of those from Thief, but there's a lot of them that increase stats or that give you extra abilities like let you wear different equipment that you're not supposed to be able to wear, stuff like that. Um, and so that's kind of, those are my go-to physical characters because... You get all these stat, little stat buffs there, and they can wear any equipment. So you end up basically going around with dual wielding the most powerful weapons in the game with that, and then give them like X fight so they can attack four times or stuff like that. Or just GP toss, because GP toss is stupid. <laughs> I believe the last time I played, I just forbade myself from using GP DOS because it's kind of like easy mode. I'm looking at this real quick. If I'm remembering correctly, what Red Mage only gets three levels of spells, so once we get to that red three, we should actually be good. That is also all the spells we're gonna have access to for the entire game. Uh, 
the third level spells that we've got right now. Um, yeah, that's gonna be challenging. We've got Cure 2, we've got Life. That's really the go-to spells that we're gonna have access to. Um, early game, those elemental spells could be nice, but I'm not super... I mean, at this point we've already got rods and uh, ninja throwing weapons, both of which are more important towards actual damage output. Hey, look at that! I actually remembered to do the efficient way to kill these enemies. I may move Lena into the front and give her a real weapon. She is rather squishy, but... Yeah, we'll find out. Lena's almost learned level 3 red. At which point I'm going to switch her to a ninja. Um, and give her level 3 red. I also don't remember what tier and just get their dual uh, wield. So we'll see if I decide I want to do that. Uh, if I want to build up to that. I don't really have a lot of places where I'm going to be able to do that, I don't think, though. Like, I could probably do it with Thief if I wanted to. But dual wield on Thief isn't that great. I mean, I could... That, the Thief is, out of all of the classes I have, the one most likely to be the physical attacker. Because ninjas have their throwing weapons, Red Mage has the breaking stabs, and Chemist is going to be doing their broken stuff pretty much the whole time. By the way, this is part one of the grind. Uh, I am going to be in this video progressing slightly because there is one other thing that they can uh one other little enemy uh that does have an item we want <laughs> so i'm gonna go have to be I'll, I'll technically be progressing story very slightly there to go into the library to farm something as well got a lot of turtle shells first. <laughs> yeah. Giving her a flail and letting her sit in the back row is great for certain situations. <laughs> Namely, if there's a boss fight that's going to be doing physical attacks. I can let her take a few shots. I just did it wrong again. Great. It's less the amount of damage she's doing and more the consistency of the damage she's doing at this point. I am eventually going to try and get everyone up to red 3, um, which is why I have two red mages at a time, because it's a slower level progression than a lot of things. It is kind of just my... I definitely want that, so I'm just going to go ahead and grind it out now. Um, while we're doing this grind anyway. 
again from the last video, I mentioned it, I believe. The nice thing with Red Mages at th with Red 3 is going to be they can cast Cure 2 and Life outside of battle. Uh, so, if everyone has it available, even if I don't use it, even if it's not equipped during the battle, like for a thief, thieves who don't use MP at all, I can switch them their ability after a battle to Red Mage, do all my healing from their MP pool that they're not using, and then swap them back to the abilities that they need in battle. damaging that attack was. Turtle shell. At this point, I'm thinking I'm going to aim for... 40 to 50. Although, given how the whole rod thing went, uh, I might go for more, because those went a lot faster than I was expecting. Also worth noting, if you're playing this game casually, you don't have to grind like this. There are definitely spots you can grind, but usually at that point you're just trying to get special level or level abilities for your or special abilities from your classes, not just grinding out weird items and levels to the extent that I am. even XP. I realize it should level itself back out, but the fact that Lena's died during two battles means that she's, you know, just that little bit behind on XP every single time now. It drives me absolutely bonkers. I really prefer for my characters to all have, like, as close to the same XP progression as possible. It's like something I'm really anal about in most RPGs, going through and leveling up everyone evenly. Uh, if you've watched my XCOM videos, that's totally why that is the way it, it is, because I'd like to rotate through characters. Um, and especially in that one, since I had more than normal, it was just really... <laughs> I mean, um, the downside to that, of course, being that you don't usually end up with in with lots of games with lots of characters. If you rotate through everyone, then you end up with a little bit less for everyone, as opposed to one really powerful team. Like, I actually do that with uh, probably one of the best examples would be Pokemon. I'll end up with, like, an entire box worth of Pokemon that I like using, and I'll rotate through them, and, you know, other people, when they 
play Pokemon, I've heard people mention that, you know, oh yeah, and when I was a kid when I played it, I also had one team that I just wrecked everything with. And that seems like it's a very common way that people play the game. I mean, I've done that for rushing through the game. Um, my last playthrough I did, I literally transferred over a powerful team and just used just that team. I overthought it completely when I did that. There were spreadsheets involved. But, yeah. It was a... It was very outside my normal element to not catch anything, to not go out of my way, to do anything, to just rush through. Uh, at that point, I was going through because uh, the legendary birds in the latest iterations of the game, uh, the only way to catch them, you get one per playthrough. And the one you get is based on your starter, so I restarted the game twice to get the two legendary birds I was missing. Yes, that's probably excessive, but that was literally the last two things I needed to complete my Pokedex, so... Yeah. I have caught them all. So it was worth it. <laughs> that is something I I have said it before and I will say it again I really wish that the Pokemon games themselves were actually more like the story and the the actual like game mode was more challenging and dynamic and interesting because Pokemon overall is probably, in my opinion, the best RPG system and series of all time. I realize that is a bold statement. <laughs> it is... very simple. You know, there's only a few stats. You get your speed. Uh, speed, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, which would be the same as like magic attack, magic defense in most uh, RPG systems. And hit points. So it very simply you know, speed is who goes first. Attack is attacking with physical moves. Special attack is, you know, non-physical moves. And then the defenses line up and you reduce the damage based on that. It's very simple to just pick up. And if, I mean, even if you're just looking at the stats a little bit, it's something that you can, that most people could do. Even if you don't normally play RPGs. I mean, it's a game made for kids. And then there's the elemental chart. Which is the part where the game gets a little bit more interesting. It has, I think, 18 elements at this point. You know, Final Fantasy, yeah, you've got fire, ice, and lightning. And, you know, some of them you end up adding in, like, earth and wind. This has 18 elements that all interact with each other in really interesting ways. You know, there's some of them that are half damage against one, but double against another, or... And then everything can have up to two types. And each attack has an element associated with it, so... From that perspective, it's very rock paper... complex rock paper scissors. Um... And part of the game is figuring out how to balance that out and how to use things that are both good with what you're using and are good with the Pokemon you're using and also are going to accomplish what you need.
And then to really just capitalize on all of that, you get to pick. So you've got your stats and your and your elements that are kind of a universal concept that you have to deal with no matter what. That's the main core of the game. But it's not like you get like a couple things to use with that. There's like 800 at this point Pokemon. And so you get to pick which ones you want. And even then, each of them has a separate ability. Several, there's usually two to three options for their passive ability. Each of them can learn four moves, which there are, again, hundreds of moves available, and depending on which Pokemon, certain moves are available or not available. There's ones that learn naturally, there's ones you can uh, breed so that they can learn uh, a move that they normally wouldn't from a parent. There's, you know, the TMs that you can teach them, there's like a huge variety there. And each one gets four. Which I've heard the complaint that, oh well, each one can only learn four moves, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of variety and potential there, and part of the restriction of only having four is you have to pick which four, which is really cool. That means that yours is going to be different, and you can do the fun, weird, cool stuff that you like, which I mentioned in my last grind video. <laughs> I like doing fun, cool, weird stuff and playing with the system. And then each one can hold one item which kind of fits in with their passive ability. Like, it's the same level of stuff, usually. And then... There's... Training. Uh, there are two hidden numbers. Hidden in the older games, they've actually made them more visible now. Uh, called Individual Values and Effort Values. Effort values are each of your six stats increases compared to others of the same type based on what you fight. If you fight things that are tough defensively, your defense starts going up more. And if you're casually playing the game and you use, you know, this, if you raise something, the reason you, the stuff you raise is stronger than the stuff that you find in the wild is because of those effort values. Because you've had a, you just have slightly above average stats all around the board. The place where it gets scary is that if you intentionally train those effort values, you can focus one area to either correct a deficit, or to really min-max your glass cannons out to make them very strong and very fast. Individual values are even more complicated and hard to take care of. <laughs> uh, basically, each individual Pokémon has slightly different base stats uh, on a scale of 1 to 31 in each of them. And... So you can technically breed out, uh, the individual values can be quasi-genetic. So if you have parent, two parents with perfect stats, then the kid will have perfect stats. Or perfect individual values as far as the stats go. Um... Sure. And then the last thing, which I probably wasn't isn't as complicated as the stuff I just mentioned, is natures, uh, which are basically the personality 
trait of each individual Pokemon has one of 15 different natures, and I think 15? No, it's more than that. Anyway, uh, 25? Uh, each of those are plus one to one stat, minus to another. Um, so again, it kind of fits in with the rest of that min-maxing element that you can do. The customization. So, between all of that stuff, unless you go completely out of your way, each... It's not just, you know, each of the 800 species is different, it's each of the 800 species is different, and every single one you catch within that 800 species has slightly different stat lines. So you can do different things with them. And... Like, the more you actually... Like, I love... I've gotten really into looking into this stuff. I, I've, I've never done the competitive side of it, really. I've built up stuff to do that competitive side if I wanted to. But I've never really felt like the need to go and do it. It's just fun to play with it. It's fun to come up with little weird creative things, and honestly, going through the game with that sort of strategy in place is a whole different experience. You can just completely wreck stuff. And I really wish that they would come out with a version of the game. Uh, some of the, like, mods and stuff. Not mods, like... People have done ROM hacks, basically, that are entirely new versions of the game. That's where I'm going. Was going with that, and the people who do those particular versions of the game are tend to be people who are trying to make it more challenging and more adult and more complex as far as the story goes. Because that's one of the big downsides with it is. Pokemon has been extremely formulaic, and even when they tried to make it less formulaic with the Sun Moon in the latest one, it still ended up being just a different version of the same formula. So, unfortunately at its core, it's still kind of a game for kids, because they won't let it grow up, as it were. The story is still... You are, you are always a t playing a 10-year-old kid, running around, you know, catching Pokemon, you go on your journey, and there are gyms with different elemental affini affinities, slash, uh, in the latest one, they changed it from gyms to, oh, you have to go and complete the trials for each of the elements. It's like, okay, that's... Still the same thing, roughly. <laughs> and then usually there's some other meta plot going on at the same time that you get dragged into. You end up finding a legendary Pokemon, saving the world, and then you fight the Elite Four, who are supposedly the best of the best. And then usually you fight a rival of some kind at the end, or the current champion. Or both! And that's Pokemon, every Pokemon, <laughs> in a nutshell. Uh, usually they've had other little plots that they toss into it, and some of them are actually good, but they're side plots that don't really go anywhere. And there's very, I mean, there's a few little side quests throughout the games where you just, like, somebody will be like, oh, hey, can you get this for me? But they're not like full actual story side quests, they're just like little fetch quests or something. I would love to see a Pokemon game where they actually explore how the world works a little bit more. Where they actually have, you know, you playing an older character or having the option to, or so at least, play a slightly older character than, you know, a little kid and 
actually explore the concepts in that. I mean, they've they've talked about the morality of it and stuff like that in a few times, and there's some of the weird little aspects with that, and the creation myths are kind of cool. But, again, it's all kind of side stuff. It's not the forefront. And exploring more adult concepts in it, I feel like would be a really cool thing that they could do. It's just probably never going to happen, because Nintendo doesn't wants to keep it a, a kid's franchise. You know, they don't... They don't even, uh... They very rarely even explore the concept of death as more than a... Uh, you know, a weird aspect to it, because Pokémon don't die, they faint. Which makes sense, I mean, that you're not actually, you know, fighting to the death or whatever, but... It's... It it's... The result is that it feels very juvenile. Because it doesn't even- it isn't even willing to talk about things. And... Yeah. And, ultimately, the challenge rating is very low. If you- because of the fact that each of the gems are elementally themed, most of the time, you can go in and just completely wreck them with one Pokemon of the right type, or something that has the right move. In the later ones, they've started tossing in like one or two little side things that'll throw you off, like, oh, the flying gym has like, a couple flying ground, which are immune to electricity, I guess you better not use that, type things. But, usually there's still not super complicated, and if you level up a little bit, they're really easy. I mean, I guess that's kind of RPGs in general, but having a little bit better AI, a little bit more skill to it, would be, or in the main game, would be really nice. But, like I said, I don't think that's ever going to really happen. I think it'd even be interesting to do a... Um, you know, right now they do always do the side-by-side, -side, the two collectible games, basically. The Red, Blue, Ruby, Sapphire, whatever. X, Y. Um, I think it would be a really interesting way to do it, would be to do... Like, uh, a basic Pokemon game and then have the more adult version, the more, uh, complex version, like the hard mode game, basically, as a second one. So the same setting, the same story, but, like, from a different perspective, where one of them, you're this... You know, the, the usual hero, the usual kid, who gets way over their head and ends up fighting this evil organization. Whereas on the other side, maybe you're like a... You know, like a, a police officer that's trying to take down the organization and this kid keeps interfering with your stuff. Or, um... You know, part of possibly even part of that organization, and you see that other perspective of why people are joining the organizations, like Team Rocket, that seem like... Okay, Team Rocket's a bad example, because it's a criminal organization, and etc. It makes sense. People just want money, but... There are some of them that are much more... You know, there's morality questions involved, like uh, the one that was fighting for... Is it Plasma? One of them was talking about, uh, you know, Pokemon rights and stuff like that, and having a character who starts out in that group and then realizes, you know, for a good reason, and then realizes that their group is wrong, and having that, uh, you know, 
that redemption arc kind of thing would be really cool. And especially if you, you know, started off with the hero from the regular game being your, like, an enemy. Somebody who kept trying to interfere and kept getting in your way while you were trying to do your good work, what you saw as good work. But that's a pipe dream that's probably never going to happen. Because, like I said, Nintendo is very fixed on their products being this very family-friendly, very... We believe our target audience is this, and we are not going to deviate from that no matter what. I mean, it's worked, so I guess why wouldn't you? <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to fuse, uh, probably fuse the videos together here, uh, and I will be right back.